I am Lady Charmaine, and my guest today has created a worship experience that has taken our churches to a new level. He has earned four Grammy Awards, six Dove Awards, two Stellar Awards, and a Soul Train Music Award. And he's here today to talk about his new single entitled, It's Not Over When God Is In It, featuring James Fortune and Jason Nelson. Help me welcome Mr. Israel Holton to the show. How you doing, Israel, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm doing very well in yourself. Good. You know, the last time I saw you was in Dallas, Texas, on the red carpet, and we were out there baking. And that was the last time I saw you for Bishop T.D. Jake's event. (laughs) Yes, yeah, that was great. Now, one thing I was thinking about you this morning, Israel, and I was thinking about artists like yourself and Mary Mary and Kirk Franklin. And I was just thinking if I was a new artist and if I was nominated in the same category as Israel Houghton, Mary Mary, Kirk Franklin, I'd be like, oh, man, I know I don't have a chance of winning. As I was going over your bio, looking at your Grammys, your Doves, your Stellars and the Soul Train Music Awards, God has truly blessed you. When you began your career, did you imagine God would be doing this for you right now? I mean, I think imagination is one thing. You, you, you start out and, you know, you're learning guitar in your bedroom, you know, 16 years old. And and I I have a healthy imagination. So, that, you know, there's <laughs> always that idea of, hey, what if we did this one day? And, and so your imagination also fuels your prayer life. And you, and you say to God, Lord, I want to be used in a big way, you know, and, and I want to be trusted with whatever platform um, you would give me. And and then you realize years later that when you really, really fall in love with God, that those imaginations um, are not just something you randomly came up with, but according to his word, when you delight yourself in him, he then gives you the desires of your heart and the difference. And what most of us believed that meant was, you know, he, he you hand him a list of the things you want, and it's not that at all. It, when he gives you, it's it, the word is like he's transplanted that into your heart. So his desires for you have become your desires. They're the things that you find yourself praying for and, and declaring. And um, so I imagined it, but but I also in hindsight now realize that God had a big plan all along. I want to say you broke that scripture down very well, Psalms 37 and 4, because that is my favorite scripture. And if you get a text from me, that is the scripture (laughs) signature. (laughs) So you explained it very well. That's exactly what that scripture means. That's my favorite scripture. Now, you've been in the music (laughs) business for a long time. Well, I guess, you know, great minds think alike and, you know, and, and we both love worship. You've been in the music business for a long time. Did you expect that God was going to use you to bring thousands of churches into worship with what he has given you? Or did you just think just at your church where you were locally? Yeah, I think it starts very organically that way. I, you know, I was, I was really, really um, excited to, to be able to be used in the capacity in my local church where a sermon could be preached or, or a campaign could be, you know, started within the church, and and we would find the words and the melody to essentially agree with that, and that became the response of the house. And I think, I think when you do that, when you when you bloom where you're planted, um, then these other doors happen very naturally. In other words, I've never been a, an ambitious like kick down doors type of person. I you know, I've I've always waited for God to go, okay, here's the next step and he opens the door. And um and so, you know, the hope is, as I said earlier, that you have great impact. The reality for most of us is that you 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 become effective with whatever platform you're given. Right. And then God does the rest. Because your worship really does take us into a deeper level and a deeper level into worship. And I know that was one of the titles of one of your projects is, do you believe that is one of your purposes and your callings to take people into a deeper level of worship and intimacy with God? Well, I, I certainly think that's part of it. I think, I think uh, in our ministry, there has been a sort of an inherent challenge uh, attached to all that we do. So there's encouragement attached to what we do and sharing the good news. 
uh, and putting songs together like it's not over, you know, and, and, and songs that just encourage and, but they also challenge, you know, mm-hmm. and so in our, in our sense, New Breed's been together 12 years, and from the very beginning, we challenge things along the lines of cross-cultural, along the lines of cross-denominational, along the lines of cross-generational, and we've done that very, very much on purpose, and, um, and we've seen that it's had its effect as a result of us just standing for what we knew God gave us to say. Because one of your songs that I actually sing at church, um, There's a Lifting, that song takes uh-huh. me in every single time. You know, when we lift our hands and lift our hearts and, and our eyes as we look into the hills from which comes our help. Because the, the, uh, your songs also have scriptures to them. So if people never heard the word, you're going to learn scripture from an Israel Houghton <laughs> song, which is good. Because that's how I actually learned the word was through songs. And when I first got saved and, you know, John P. Key, because when I got saved, you know, a lot of people who were raised, you know, in church and they were raised singing all these little songs. Well, I got saved at 20. So I did. I knew John three sixteen, and I heard of the Book of Revelation. Anything I heard of Psalms and Proverbs. Anything in between, I didn't know. No Matthew, no Mark, no Luke, no John. And so when people add the word to their songs, it really brings when you go back to read the word alive. So I want to say thank you for that. But you just mentioned your new single. I want to talk about that. Your new single is entitled "It's Not Over When God Is In It," featuring James Fortune and and Jason Nelson. Tell us about the song and the inspiration behind the song. Well, the song, um, I, I think, was one of those songs that we knew we wanted to write, um, sort of in anticipation of, of troubled times, you know? Mm-hmm. We wrote it uh, about a year and a half ago, and, and you could just tell there was a tension in the air, you know? You could, you could feel just the sense of, man, it almost feels like it's going to get worse before it gets better, you mm-hmm. know? And you would hear the the talking heads on, on cable saying, Hey, you know, everybody buckle down, hold on. You know, I know you thought, I know you thought we were through it, but we're not quiet. And so you sort of get a steady dose of that kind of information and people start to start to get, you know, strange. And one of the lines in the song is you're closer than you think you are. You're closer than you've been before. Mm -hmm. And while we were in the middle of writing this, On a Sunday morning, Pastor Joel Osteen, the church that I lead worship at, uh, Lakewood Church, said, gave this message, and in in one of his examples, he he talked about, you're closer than you think you are. And I remember saying, okay, that's got to be in a song, because I think when we're in turmoil as people, as individuals, as fathers, as mothers, we see our problem only sometimes sometimes it's it is so big and it's so daunting that we don't see what's on the other side of it Mm -hmm. and um and so this was just a visual to to say listen you're closer than you think you are help is on the way it's not over matter of fact this is just just the beginning when god is in it all things are made new all the time Mm. and so um that said we felt like conceptually we knew what we wanted to say I think musically we we borrowed inspiration from people like our friends Kurt Franklin and James Fortune as far as the way the song was put together. And um, when when it was so, uh, I I reached out to James and said, "You got to do this song with us, man." And uh, and then called Jason Nelson and did the same. And so. I got to tell you, every time we did the song, when we did it live, and when we did it in the studio, it was just, it was one of those songs that had this takeover quality about it. It just, like, messed everything up, you know. We'd start crying, and mm. had to stop filming at one point, had to start over at another point. And so, um, and we're getting a lot of just really tremendous feedback from people saying it's, it's having that effect on them as well. Because I know when I first heard the song, you know, the, the other day, and I was, because I always like to listen to music while I'm busy. The reason why, because if a song catches my attention, then I know that song is going to be a hit. That's how I listen to music. And so, but if it doesn't catch my attention, I'm like, oh, that, that one, you know, might not. <laughs> and I was sitting and I was working and the lyrics literally exploded. 
And you know, and it is so true because when, when you think a situation is over, but the encouraging part, it's not over when God is in it. So when God is in your situation and it makes you remember God is in this. So this is not over. It's not bleak. It's not dead because God is in this situation. And we serve a God of the resurrection because he is the resurrection in the life. It's kind of like Ezekiel. Can these bones live again? And no matter the situation, it's not over when God is in it. So I want to say thank you for this. Okay, Israel, uh, we know your album is getting ready to come out. It's getting ready to drop August the 14th. Tell us about some of the songs on the on your project and the name of the project. The name of the project is Jesus at the Center. And it's a live double CD that we did. And of course, with It's Not Over and a couple other songs, we did studio versions of, of a few as well for certain radio formats. But it's the first live record we've done as a group in five years uh, since we did Deeper Level. And we did it at my home church, Lakewood Church in uh, Houston, Texas. And, you know, I think over the course of the two nights or over 30,000 people who came out. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it is kind of an advantage being at home uh, for that in, in that regard. But we just had a, a moment after moment where we established right up front this whole record is about Jesus. This isn't about, you know, pronoun gospel or metaphor or gospel to us. Like, this is the pure good news of Jesus Christ sitting at the center of everything we're going to say tonight. Mm-hmm. And um, and it really just set the tone for, for him to be center stage. It took the pressure off us to try and have to perform, you know. It, it just, it's, it's one of the most riveting things I've ever been involved in, whether whether I was on the stage or whether I would have been in the audience, I would have been I would have been riveted by what took place that night. Well, I, I like the title too, Jesus at the Center. So that means you can step back and make him center stage. And that's true because you don't have to worry about performing because when God is in it, you are truly ministering and he's blessing the people. And speaking of you being on center stage, <laughs> you, Israel, you're on the King's Men Tour. It's yourself, Kirk Franklin, Marvin Sapp, Donnie McClurkin. And the tour is going to be hitting uh, Northern California on September the 22nd. Tell us about the tour and how did this yes. tour come about? <laughs> Well, um, you know, I think this is definitely the brainchild of, of Live Nation and Kirk Franklin. And when Kirk was asked who he wanted to go out with, um, my name was mentioned along with Bonnie and, and Marvin Sapp. I'm sure my name was mentioned third. I'm sure, I'm sure one of those <laughs> two was first or second. Okay. <laughs> but, but the point is, uh, when I was asked to be a, a part of it, I... You know, I had a simple answer, and that was absolutely, you know, I'll be there. So I know as far as Northern California, we're coming to the Sleep Train Pavilion, Mm -hmm. right? Yes, you are. I'm excited about that venue. And uh, and what I've heard is a lot of churches are getting together that day and barbecuing and hanging out. And and, uh, it's going to be a special special night for sure it is because i had gotten the flyer like way in advance and um i hadn't even heard about the tour so i got the flyer and so i went on here and i posted the flyer i got so much response from that flyer from on facebook from all over the country people were like well when is it coming to my city so i had to literally go and find um all your tour dates and then post that to facebook because i couldn't answer everybody one by one to say okay what city are you in and so i just posted it so everybody would know so i there is such um and excitement about your concert coming to the sleep train theater so i'm really excited about it you got all these great men on one stage what you say Concert gonna be what? Four hours. <laughs> <laughs> so how it's, it's, well, it's, we're, we're trying to make it a night that doesn't get too heavy and too bogged down. We're doing a lot of creative um, things in tandem with each other, and um, but it is going to be a special night. I can tell you just the look of it, the, the feel of it. You know, we've all gone to concerts, and 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 we thank God for them. But you know production value has not been high hasn't started on time you know there's a lot of feedback and you know that sort of thing and and you know my cousin is going to come sing a quick song first before we get started and you know all that kind of thing (laughs) and this 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 is not that this is a it's going to be a finely tuned well-produced show but because of the people you have in it it's not going to be so finely tuned and well-produced that the Spirit of God is not able to move. You know, there's still all kinds of space 
um, for for God to do what what only He can do in moments like that. So we uh, we feel like we're definitely going to have the best of both worlds as far as the presentation is concerned, and then us just being who we are as ministers. I'm going to tell you that's all you needed to say was when you said there's not space, because that's what I preach on a lot. Because some places and some programs are so orchestrated that God cannot move in that particular program. And when you said that you are a man after my own heart, you always got to give God the opportunity opportunity to move. So that is a concert. Anybody that's listening right now under the sound of my voice, this is a concert that you want to attend because when you allow God to move, that's all you needed to say to me. <laughs> so, so I'll be seeing you on September the 22nd. <laughs> so as long as I know this bit of God is going to move, can you let everybody know where they can pick up your single? Is your single available right now? The single is available right now on iTunes. Um, it's not over. All they all they need to look up is Israel and New Breed. It's not over. And in parentheses, it's when God is in it. And uh, they will find it. And uh, we're excited about it. And record comes out August 14th, and I just... You know, if I could give a money back guarantee to everybody listening, I would. Uh, I will give you your money back if you don't like this record. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's that's a uh, big statement. <laughs> a big statement. Huge. Well, I mean, they'll, they'll have to call Lady Charmaine to get their money back, but, but they, they'll get it. Sure. And then I'll reroute you to Israel at Newbury. <laughs> <laughs> So if people wanted to follow you, are you on Twitter, Facebook, have a website, if they just want to keep up even uh, yeah. even on your Kingsmen tour dates? Yeah, all of that. Uh, newbreedmusic.com is our website. Uh, at Israel Newbreed is our Twitter handle. And I also have an at Israel Houghton uh, Twitter. So, uh, And Israel and Newbreed at Facebook. Fantastic. Israel, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Look forward to seeing you on September the 22nd. Thank you. And thank you for supporting us and getting behind the song. I really, really am grateful for that. You are so welcome. And again, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.